Hey, what's going on guys? This is Nishi here back with another Market Watch episode. Today we're actually going to take a look at a few cards that have been moving kind of under the radar over the last little while. While we all pay attention to the big things like droplets and talents and magician souls, there are often a lot of smaller, lesser known cards that can be very easy to overlook. Of course, we should still pay attention to them because even though they're cheap in terms of dollar amount, they might now be worth four or five times what you paid for them not that long ago and flipping multiple cards for five times the profit is probably going to be even more profitable than moving just a single pricier card. Let's get started. Kicking things off, we have a common card that is definitely worth digging out of your bulk. We have Heavenly Dragon Circle. This is a pretty simple quick play spell, allowing you to tribute a worm to add a worm from your deck to your hand, or if you tributed a non-worm monster, you can special summon the monster instead. It also has a graveyard effect where if you control a non-effect monster, you can banish it to search for a Tenyi, so it does have the potential to provide you with multiple follow-up cards. Now, this is a card that has become quite popular in a lot of Sword Soul Tenyi decks, since as a quick play, you can use it to help play around Impermanence or Veiler with Moyi to summon Ouch Thana, the Water Tenyi, so that you can still make Chishou. And of course, if your card would be destroyed, you can chain this card so that you can make use of the monster that would have been destroyed to still be able to play the game next turn. I'm playing Sword Soul myself, and I personally don't really like this card. Some of my friends absolutely swear by it, so make of it what you will. Maybe it depends on the playstyle, I prefer Vessel myself. Anyways, this card only has the one common printing from Rise of the Duelist, which is apparently the set that just keeps on giving since it wasn't even reprinted in the Megatons either. It's not worth a huge amount, but they are up at $2 each, which is quite a bit considering that the card was just bulk before. Definitely a card to dig through your bulk for and set aside if you still have some old Rise of the Duelist bulk lying around. Next up is a bit more of a low-key one that you might want to pay attention to. It is Chi Wen, Light of the Yangzing. So this is a card that can summon another Yangzing out of your deck when it's destroyed, just like all the others, but it also summons itself out of the graveyard when a Yangzing that you control is destroyed. It is also a level 1 tuner. Now unfortunately, Yangzings aren't a very popular strategy at all. However, this is a card that is seeing a bit of play in a new deck over in the OCG, Brave Token Tenyi. You can use this card with Beyond the level 3 Earth Monster to synchro into a Herald of the Arclight that can't be destroyed by battle. So that's a Walking Negate and a Macro Cosmos that can be really annoying to get rid of for your opponent. Now, I don't think that this is necessarily going to be that big here in the TCG. In the OCG, they have Danglong Unbanned, which is basically the card that facilitates this entire combo. I don't know how likely it is that Denglong gets unbanned here, I personally think it would be really cool to see, but the card does provide a ton of value with multiple effects for a generic level 5 synchro, so I could definitely see why people would want it to stay banned. Anyways, the card is also worth noting because it only has two older printings available, the Duelist Alliance and Megatin Ultra Rares, each of which is about $4 each at the moment. The last time that this card was printed was back in 2015, so this was quite a few years ago and the card is going to be fairly difficult to find. All of that being said, I definitely wouldn't go out and try to buy up copies of Chiwen, right, like too actively, since it being worth something depends almost entirely on whether or not Denglong eventually gets banned, but I definitely think think that if you can pick up a few copies of this card out of some binders for maybe a dollar or two each from someone who's been sitting on it for a long time and doesn't really care about it, it's a great card to slowly accumulate over time if you can find someone who doesn't really care about them. The next one is a card that we looked at a few weeks ago, it is Butuniful Princess. This card is a pretty cool card for the Water Ixies deck as you can use it to summon Buzzsaw Shark directly out of your deck to start off combos. Now as we talked about before, the Water deck gets a lot of useful tools in Brothers of Legend such as the Sea Nettle and Right and Left Hand Sharks, as well as some cool cards coming out in the next Legendary Duelist set. I think that there's some attention around the deck now though. There's a list running around that took first place at a Locals or something. Nothing too crazy but it gives people a bit of a framework to work with. There's also a bunch of people playing it on Dueling Book now as well. When we looked at this card last time, it was only $5 a piece. That still seemed like a lot, right? The card only has the one rare printing from way back in Primal Origin. Now, however, the card is all the way up at $15 each on TCG Player, which definitely feels really, really crazy. The Water Deck is definitely one that you guys are going to want to pay attention to, but honestly, even if I were that big on the deck, I don't think I would be able to justify spending $40 for a playset of this card, so I personally would just hold out on it for now. 
I would wait to see if it gets reprinted in either OTS Tournament Pack 18 as a common or a super, or the next Legendary Duelist set itself, before deciding to spend too much on something like this. Alright, so one other water card that we're going to talk about here, this was actually featured in the water list that's running around right now. This is Rare Fish, so this is a level 4 vanilla fusion monster, which means that it can be special summoned out using Ready Fusion, which is a package that I think everyone is looking at using in the Water Xyz deck. Obviously it's pretty simple, but maybe some people let their guard down because we haven't really seen Ready Fusion do anything ever since its release. It might have seen a tiny bit of play, I think in Phantom Knight decks to bring out a level 3 extender, but that's about it up until now. So Rare Fish has just one common printing available from way back in OTS Tournament Pack 3, and we need to remember that these exclusive fusion monsters were short printed so they are quite difficult to pull as well. At the moment, on TCG Player we are looking at $25 for a single English copy. I think you can pick up a German or Italian copy for around $15 on TCG Player if you're okay with that, which honestly isn't too bad since you probably don't need a translation if you're playing a monster that doesn't have an effect. I don't know 100% about that, you guys should probably check with Tom. Anyways, if you happen to have this card lying around somewhere, it might be worth offloading for now if you aren't planning on using it, or maybe you can hold on to it until other water support is officially released here in the TCG. If this is something you left in your bulk commons, it's definitely worth digging up and looking to offload while there's some hype around it. Alright, so this card is absolutely not a stranger to Market Watch at all. I think we've talked about this card multiple times. It is Sky Striker Ace Shizuku. So in this spot, I was either going to talk about Shizuku or Widow Anchor. I think both of them are kind of in the same boat here. But the point is that we are talking about Sky Strikers. So the deck got engaged back, which is obviously pretty cool. But the deck low-key got another boost in the release of Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. They can actually use DPE as an additional way to disrupt your opponent. And by clearing itself off of the field, your main monster zones are left open so that you can still use your back row. This, combined with the deck's ability to main deck there can be only one, and win games with it single-handedly, has led to the deck popping up fairly frequently now. With Shizuku, the card does only have three printings, the ultimate rares are obviously priced ridiculously high, I'm not going to look at those, but the secrets are now 12 each, and the original supers are 8 to $9. I actually thought that Shizuku was going to get an alternate art printing in Maximum Gold Eldorado, since Konami seems to really like Sky Strikers, but unfortunately this was not the case. Now, unlike Kagari, which has a ton of different printings available, Shizuku is the one that is slightly more difficult to find if you're hoping to put together the strategy. Hopefully the card does get reprinted soon, especially since there's new Sky Striker cards coming in that shiny box over in the OCG, and we should theoretically see some Sky Striker reprints when the cards are imported here as well. I'm not showing it here, but I definitely think that Widow Anchor is in a very comparable position to Shizuku. It's a 3 of for Sky Strikers, with limited availability compared to other key cards in the deck that should hopefully be reprinted soon. If you are sitting on extra copies of either of these cards, definitely consider offloading them over the next couple of months if you can find someone who's looking to pay the full retail value for them, just in case they do see that reprint. Okay, so this is a really weird one that I didn't quite understand at first, my friend told me about this one. Uh, so number 59, Crooked Cook, has a pretty simple effect if there are no other cards on your side of the field. It is completely unaffected by card effects, which I guess is cool. I think the idea here is that you can stall with this card in the Water Xyz deck, since if you use Right Hand Shark to make it, then you also can't destroy this thing by battle, and then your opponent might have a really hard time winning the game and you can just kind of stall them out indefinitely. I think that at some point, your only out would be like a kaiju or something, which is really annoying. Anyways, the card is also being talked about by a couple of other YouTube channels, which is definitely contributing to some of the hype. I think that it was featured on Team Yodalox's channel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, also, I think I saw some stuff on Facebook about how some people were just targeting this card specifically for buyouts, which, I mean, like, I guess that's cool. Anyways, I do remember this card basically just being bulk before. Now, however, we are looking at having to pay $6 each for the ultra rares, and then the commons are already a dollar each, which is pretty decent. I don't really think that this card is going to be doing anything too crazy or too meta relevant. It might be an annoying package to deal with against some sort of like stall or burn deck, but who really knows? If you have extra copies of this card, I personally think it's something that you should sell into the hype with, but if you believe in the hype buyouts, then maybe you want to hold onto it for a little bit longer just to see where its peak is at. 
All right, guys, the last card I want to briefly mention here is Dragon Maid Changeover. I think that this card did go up a little bit about a month ago as well. I think it's still an important card for us to talk about. This is the fusion spell card for the Dragon Maid deck, which also has a graveyard effect where you can bounce a Dragon Maid from your field to the hand to re-add this card from your graveyard. Now, unfortunately, Dragon Maids aren't a particularly competitive strategy, but being a waifu deck, they are probably one of the more popular strategies with the casual player base. What's important to note is that with Hospitality and Chamber now reprinted, in Maximum Gold Eldorado, that's two really expensive cards for the archetype that are now more widely available, so the deck is actually pretty affordable to put together, especially considering that Kitchen and Nurse were also reprinted the previous year. That being said, expect a lot of people to keep their eyes out for Dragon Maid Changeover, as one of the last cards from the archetype that has yet to be reprinted. This card was before only a dollar or so, since it's not a particularly important card for the strategy, but I think they do still need to play it in order to access the house and the Shio. As more and more casual players opt to build the deck with how cheap the rest of the pieces are, expect this card's price to slowly trend upwards over time, assuming that it doesn't get reprinted. At $3, the card does still have room to grow. I could definitely see it moving up to anywhere between $5 and $10 over the next few months. Now that doesn't mean that this is a card to go out and buy a ton of copies of, especially at $3, but it is definitely worth keeping an eye on over the next little bit, and it's definitely something that you guys should be setting aside out of your bulk. Alright guys, that is it for today's episode. I know a lot of the stuff we talked about today is really, really random, still important cards to keep an eye on. We will be back a second time later this week to talk about some cards that I feel like are pretty cheap and undervalued at the moment that I think are worth picking up now especially as we move into the new year and a new format, so make sure you guys keep an eye out for that one. Anyways, if you did enjoy today's episode, make sure that you slam that thumbs up button for me and let me know. Also, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about the cards we talked about today, and also let me know about what other cards are trending on the market so I can cover them in future episodes. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get all of the latest and greatest content from both me and Tombox here on the channel. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.